<laughs> How y'all doing? I'm Joshua Wiley, and this video right here is called Pope Francis meeting with the Congress foretold in Bible prophecy. Now I might name it a little different once I type in the title, but that's that's what this is about. And uh, some some people know where this is found in Bible prophecy, but others don't know. So this is like the introductory video. And in the later videos, I'm going to go in more detail. I'm going to go in more detail with the history along with the prophecy. But uh, it's actually found in two places. In the book of Daniel and the book of Revelation. Now the book of Daniel is the first book of prophecy. A lot of people make the mistake of trying to understand Revelation by just reading Revelation. But to understand Revelation, which is the second book of prophecy, you have to understand the first. You have to understand the first. So, but this meeting, you know, I wanted to lay the groundwork for the whole series that I'm going to do uh, with this video because it is significant. And even I didn't realize how significant and important this meeting was until the Holy Spirit impressed upon me and said, Joshua, do you, do you realize what's really happening? No other religious leader has been brought in to address our nation's government, our nation's parliament of leaders. No other religious leader. You know, he was already deemed... He was already deemed the spiritual leader of the world by President Obama not too long ago. So him addressing our government and our Congress, you know, uh, not only is it, uh, how should I say, not only is it a, a humongous, monumental, that's the word I was looking for, monumental thing, but it is also a part of a bigger prophecy. It is a major part of a bigger prophecy. Now, we're going to be looking at just today, and I'm going to skim through. Like I said, I'm going I'm to give the groundwork. I'm going to skim through in this introductory video, and then in the later videos, we're going to go into detail on these things for those who don't know these things. This is specifically for those who don't know. And those who do know, you might learn a little, a little something extra. But like Revelation 13. Now, just to skim through real quick, Revelation 13, 1 through 5 talks about the Roman Catholic Church and her reign during the Dark Ages. You know, when she was killing Christians and persecuting anyone who had a Bible. Anyone who had a Bible and was teaching Bible truth was killed and persecuted. But, and like I say, in the, in the next videos, we're going to really pick this thing apart because I know some people who might not know these things will say Joshua how do you know that Revelation 13 1 through 5 is talking about the Catholic Church well that's what we're going to deal with in the later videos we're going to go into detail and when I say go into detail me me personally I, I can't read prophecy and without putting the history actual history behind it Act, history is told and done to clarify prophecy and vice versa you know, prophecy is actually foretold so you will see the majesty and the might of Christ. He said, I tell you these things so that you know that I am true. <laughs> so when these things come to pass, you'll be like, wow, God said it. You know, God is true. You know, but anyway, Revelation 13 verses 1 through 5 speaks about the Roman Catholic Church when she had dominion on the earth. And that's, that's this beast that's described right here. That's this beast that's described. Now, she she received a wound. Let's see where we can find it. Verse 3, Revelation 13, verse 3. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death. Now, this took place in 1798, I believe, with General Berthier of Napoleon's army. Marched straight into the Vatican and took the Pope hostage. That ended the Catholic Church's reign on the world. He took the Pope hostage. The Pope ended up dying in exile. But that was the wound. That was the wound that the Catholic Church received. That was the wound that received. Now when it says, and his deadly wound was healed. Still in verse 3 of Revelation 13. Hold on one second. Caleb, put the blanket over the bird, Caleb. 
Now they had just been in here quiet and chilling for hours. But the minute I started recording, da, 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 da. but we already know it's nothing but the enemy. Nothing but the enemy. Either that, either it's the devil or they think I'm talking to them. Put it over the cage. All right. But it says, and his deadly wound was healed. Now, this took place in 1929 with Mussolini, and his wound is still being healed. You know, Mussolini started to put the 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 gauze over the, the wound, as you could say. In 1929, Mussolini declared, gave the Pope back his sovereignty, gave the Catholic Church back their sovereign rule. And as you can say, the wound has been healing, because, and it is healed so much that now, the world is like in love with the Pope and the Catholic Church when before in the seventh that was the reason why Napoleon took a hostage before in uh, the 17th century the 1700s 1800s 1600s the world knew how vicious and cruel the Catholic Church had been and I want to state this now when I say the Catholic Church I am not talking about the people I am talking about the system because there is God fearing sincere Christians, Catholic Christians who love the Lord. And so I'm not talking about the people. I'm talking about the system. But anyway, it has the, the wound has been healing and is fully healed so much to where, like I said, the Pope was now declared the spiritual leader of the world and the whole world, even Protestant churches are like, let's join hands. Let's forget about the 200 million Christians that were killed and slain. You know, and the number is higher than that because who could really keep numbers of death back then? You know, sometimes we look at history and think that it's like today. There was no internet. There was no fax machines and file cabinets. No, we're talking about in the 1500th century, 1400s, 1500s. You know, when you could go up on a, they could go up on a little town kill, rape, and pillage the whole town. Who's going to keep record of it other than word of mouth? You know, most of the people were peasants or commoners and really couldn't write and things of that nature. Most couldn't. The other ones who were smart and could went off to universities, things of that nature. So there were a lot of people who were killed that it wasn't kept track of. But anyway, anyway, uh, this deadly one was healed. So Revelation 13, 1 through 5 is talking about this beast. Why is this significant? You say, why is this significant, Josh? What does this have to do with the Pope meeting here on September? It's humongous because verse 11, this is where America steps in the Bible prophecy. If you want to know where America is at in the book of Revelation, one of the one of the main areas is Revelation 13, verse 11. And I beheld another beast. Now, Revelation 13, like I say, the first part of 13 is speaking about this one beast. And for those who don't know, beast means kingdom or nation. Now, Revelation 13, 1 through 10 is speaking about the Roman Catholic Church, but verse 11 says, And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And just as a quick synopsis, so just a quick rundown before we go into detail in later videos on how this is America. Now, remember, America was really founded because of the persecution that was taking place in Europe during the time of the dark ages the pilgrims and the, uh, the puritans were seeking a place that they could worship god freely without persecution that is why you had pilgrims and puritans and people of that nation and anglicans fleeing europe they were seeking freedom of worship you know and and that's big because there are those who say the catholic church never persecuted nobody okay then why were people fleeing to seek uh, a place where they could worship freely. You know, it's, it's right there in history. It's all right there in history. But this kingdom, it says it came up out of the earth. And once, once you read, and you'll see in Revelation 13, 1 through 10, when it talks about the Catholic Church kingdom, the first beast, we'll call it the first beast, when it speaks about the first beast, it says it, it came out of the sea. And sea in Bible prophecy means people, places, nations, and tongues. So it you know, that kingdom came up out of the sea. It came from amongst the people. But this kingdom, as you see, it says it came up out of the earth. Now, remember, remember, they thought the earth was flat back in the day, back back during uh, during the Dark Ages. It was thought that the earth was flat. 
And one of the ways it could say it came up out of the earth was because it came basically out of nowhere, unknown to the populated world at that time. Even though there were people living in America, the Native Americans and the Eskimos, things of that nature, it's to the known world, to Europe, Africa, the Middle East, uh, Asia, it came up, it was a place that just sprung up out of nowhere. It came up out of the earth. And it said it had two horns like a lamb. Meaning the lamb, what does a lamb signify? Christianity, but also innocence. So it was a land that it, it appeared, it, say it appeared to be Christ-like, Christian. It appeared to be innocent, but it spake. Speaking is action. Its actions were that of the devil. Meaning, America, even though it appeared to be innocent in a new land, it was built upon tyranny. First off, we robbed and killed the, the, the people who actually lived here, the Native Americans, the Eskimos, and the, the, the Mexicans, the Latinos. We just killed and pillaged them and took what we want. It was its action spake as the devil. And then we had slaves of every kind, you know, Black slave, Indian slave, Japanese slave, slaves of every kind, you know, but more blacks than any, more blacks than any. But I, I want to stress there were slaves of every kind. And then it says in verse 12, and he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him. OK, now we're getting to modern time. I just want to what ways uh, does America exercise the first beast? Now, remember, the first beast was Rome, right? One one of the characteristics of Rome was its acting. It's acting. America, aren't we big on acting? TV, when I say acting and referring to the first Rome, the first Rome had amphitheaters where they were actors and things of that nature. Now we have transformed and elevated that. It's TV, TV shows, movies. It's just one aspect. Rome had sports and coliseums, you know, where, where games, they used to just call them games, which they call sports, sports and games. That's common. Then we have sports and games. Then we have sports and games as a major thing. So basically entertainment is one area, one area that he exercised in his power of the first beast before. Him. And we just had a monumental decision just get past about same-sex marriage where People who are man and man and woman and woman can marry each other. The only other nation to legalize it in history was Rome. Was Rome as far as a superpower, as far as a world superpower, making it, legalizing it throughout the whole kingdom was Rome. So these are just some ways that it exercised all the power of Rome before before. And, and as we see this attack on spiritual matters and things of this nature, we are a modern day Rome. America is a modern day Rome, a modern day Rome. I heard one historian say, uh, one Bible teacher today, he said, all roads lead to Rome. All roads lead to Rome. Now this is monumental, why? Because what religious leader is about to visit our Congress address our, not just visit our Congress, but address them, speak to them about some issues as if he is really in control. Hmm. Verse 12, Revelation 13, verse 12. He exercises all the power of the first beast before him and causeth the earth and them that dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. Now we're gonna pretty much end the talk right here. He's gonna cause the world to worship. Now, you don't have to, for someone to cause you to worship, all they gotta get you to do is to go along. Oh yeah, that's it. If they set up a way of living, if they set up a way of living, if they, if they set up a certain mind state or belief system, and they can get you to follow that belief system, then guess what, beloved? You are worshiping as they tell you to worship. What if we know in 321, and we're going to go deal with this in detail in later videos, but in 321 AD, the Roman Catholic Church took the Bible seventh day Sabbath, which was being worshiped at the time worldwide on Saturday. It took it, Constantine did, and they made it a law 
for for Christians to worship on Sunday because Constantine, the Roman Catholic Church up to then, because many Catholics tend to believe that the Catholic Church was always Christian. It wasn't. Not until 321 AD when Constantine became a Christian, but he wasn't baptized till his death. But anyway, uh, when the Catholic Church said, okay, we're going to start being Christian because up to that point, they killed Christians. And they said, okay, we're going to start, we're going to become Christians now. We're not going to be pagan anymore. So what they did was they took their pagan beliefs and brought them inside into Christianity. And this, they said, okay, the Jews and the known world has, they worship on Saturday is their Sabbath. We're going to keep our pagan day of sun worship. And we're just going to make that our Sabbath. They don't hide it, please. I know people comment on this, but they don't hide it. They brag about it. They brag about it. It's in their catechism. It's in the Catholic catechism where they boast on it. They said, we made Sunday the Sabbath, not the Bible. But anyway, when it, where it says in verse 12, and, and cause of the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose daily one was healed, one form is to they're going to use, they're going to say, well, how about we make everybody worship on the same day? You know, that will cause unity. Everybody will get to rest. It'll be a rest day. That's, and guess how the devil's planet? He's calling it family day. He's trying to say, oh, it's a day of Sunday. You know, Sunday's going to be a day of family and rest. And if you want to do any work on this day, you're really not trying to unify with everyone and love everyone. You know, because you don't want to, you don't want to be about family and resting and things of that nature, but they're going to force it upon people. Now, that's one of the characteristics of Rome and the devil is force. So it is coming and, and Google it, please Google it. There are all America already has Sunday laws on the books, meaning if they, they, and they're, they're called Sunday blue laws. They're just not uh, enforcing them. They're already activated and already on the law books. Yes, Google it for yourself, beloved. So as so when it's time to enforce them, they can just start enforcing it. They don't have to make a law. They don't have to pass no law. They don't even have to tell tell us why. Because the laws are already on the books and already activated. They're just not being enforced. <laughs> this is a the rabbit hole is deep y'all it is deep and so Pope Francis is not just this isn't some just some random visit out of the blue I guess this would that I wanted the introduction video to be about that this isn't some random meeting it is time to get our houses in order it is time to get close to the Lord it is time to check your character and let go of these bad habits. Beloved, there is nothing in this world worth holding on to. I'd rather live in, in eternity with Christ than stay in this evil, wicked, <laughs> despairing place any longer. I hate to say it like that, but I'm miserable here. This, this world, look around you. Who wants to live forever here? Give me heaven. Give me Jesus. Give me heaven. But beloved, time is short. Prophecy is being fulfilled in front of our very eyes. We are at the edge of eternity. I am pleading. It is time to get your house in order. It is time to get your character straight. We are running out of time, y'all. Soon, you will not be able to get right. Do not listen to the devil thinking you'll always have tomorrow. You will not always have tomorrow. The time to get right with the Lord is now. The time to get right with Jesus is now. Is now. Y'all have a good one.